The Helpful Robots by Robert J. Shea. They had come to pass judgment on him. He had violated their law, willfully, ignorantly, and very deliberately. The Helpful Robots by Robert J. Shea. Our people will be arriving to visit us today, the robot said. Shut up, snapped Rob Rankin. He jumped wryly and quickly out of the chair on his veranda and stared at a cloud of dust in the distance. Our people, the ten-foot, cylinder-bodied robot grated, when Rob Rankin interrupted him. I don't care about your fool people, said Rankin. He squinted at the cloud of dust getting bigger and closer behind the wall of cash trees that surrounded the rolling acres of his plantation that damn new neighbor of mine is coming over here again he gestured widely taking in the dozens of robots with their shiny cylindrical bodies and pipe stem arms and legs laboring in his fields get all your people together and go hide in the woods fast it is not right said the robot we were made to serve all well there are only a hundred of you and i'm not sharing you with anybody said rankin it is not right the robot repeated don't talk to me about what's right said rankin you're built to follow orders nothing else i know a thing or two about how you robots work you've got one law to follow orders and until that neighbor of mine sees you and gives you orders you work for me now get into those woods and hide until he goes away we will go to greet those who come to visit us today said the robot all right all right scram said rankin the robots in the field and the one whom rankin had been talking to formed a column and marched off into the trackless forest behind his plantation a battered old ground car drove up a few minutes later a tall broad-shouldered man with a deep tan got out and walked up the path to rankin's veranda hi burrows said rankin hello said burrows see your crops coming along pretty well can't figure out how you do it you've got acres and acres to tend far as i can see and i'm having a hell of a time with one little piece of ground i swear you must know something about this planet that i don't know just scientific farming said rankin carelessly look you come over here for something or just a gab i've got a lot of work to do burroughs looked weary and worried them brown beetles is at my crop again he said i thought you might know of some way of getting rid of em sure said rankin pick em off one by one that's how i get rid of em why man said burroughs you can't walk over all those miles and miles of farm and pick off every one of them beetles you must know another way rankin drew himself up and stared at burroughs i'm telling you all i feel like telling you you're going to stand there and jaw all day seems to me like you've got work to do rankin said burroughs i know you were a crook back in the terran empire and that you came out here beyond the border to escape the law seems to me though that even a crook any man would be willing to help his only neighbor out on a lonely planet like this you might need help yourself sometime you keep your thoughts about my past to yourself said rankin remember i keep a gun and you've got a wife and a whole bunch of kids on that farm of yours be smart and let me alone i'm going said burroughs he walked off the veranda and turned and spat carefully into the dusty path he climbed into his ground car and drove off rankin angry watched him go then he heard a humming noise from another direction he turned a huge white globe was descending across the sky a spaceship thought rankin startled police this planet was outside the jurisdiction of the terran empire when he'd cracked that safe and made off with a hundred thousand credits he'd headed here because the planet was part of something called the clear chan confederacy no extradition treaties or anything 
perfectly safe if the planet was safe and the planet was more than safe there had been a hundred robots waiting when he landed where they came from he didn't know but rankin prided himself on knowing how to handle robots he appropriated their services and started his farm at the rate he was going he'd be a plantation owner before long that must be where the ship was from the robot said that expected visitors must be the clear chan confederacy visiting this robot outpost was that good or bad from everything he'd read and from what the robots had told him they were probably more robots that was good because he knew how to handle robots the white globe disappeared into the jungle of kesh trees rankin waited half an hour later the column of his robot laborers marched out of the forest there were three more robots painted gray at the head the new ones from the ship thought rankin well he'd better establish who was boss right from the start stop right there he shouted the shiny robot laborers halted but the three gray ones came on stop shouted rankin they didn't stop and by the time they reached the veranda he cursed himself for having failed to get his gun two of the huge gray robots laid gentle hands on his arms gentle hands but hands of super strong metal the third said we have come to pass judgment on you you have violated our law what do you mean rankin said the only law robots have is to obey orders it is true that the robots of your terran empire and these simple workers here must obey orders but they are subject to a higher law and you have forced them to break it that is your crime what crime said rankin we of the clear chan confederacy are a race of robots our makers implanted one law in us and then passed on we have carried our law to all the planets we have colonized in obeying your orders these workers were simply following that one law you must be taken to our capital and there be imprisoned and treated for your crime what law what crime our law said the giant robot is help thy neighbor the end of the helpful robots by robert j shea